Hi, my name is Karla Vresh, and I'm a junior on the American University women's basketball team. Growing up, I have an older brother, and he is almost seven years older than me, so everything he was doing, I wanted to do it too. He was a part of the men's basketball team in our school, and I would see him play on the team, I would see him play outside with his friends, of course I would always tag along, and naturally I wanted to do it too. I wouldn't be me as a person if it wasn't for basketball. My leadership skills, my, my people skills, uh, me as a teammate, me as just a person to work with, all of those things come from basketball and are now translated to school, translated to my friendships and other relationships. Carl is a magnificent human being. Um, I think we felt that on her official visit when she came. She actually came to our game against Bucknell, which is, was our conference rival that year. And she sat in stands and she got to meet everybody and she was making friends like from day one on a visit, not even like day one at the university. It was just an easy adjustment. She's so mature and I think that's probably because she's a little bit older than the average freshman and she's had different experiences. She's coming from living in different countries, playing with literally grown women, right, on, on her basketball uh, teams overseas in Sweden. So I was born and raised in Zagreb, Croatia, which is the capital, and as a kid, before I started playing basketball, I would always, always talk to my parents and just be like, we're never traveling anywhere, they had to work a lot. And so our travels were, you know, to my grandma's house and back and to the seaside every now and then. And then as I started playing basketball, I just started traveling all over the place for tournaments and games. And then when I just about to turn 15, my parents decided that we would move to Sweden. It was just the best decision for our family. And one of the parts of the decision was also where exactly in Sweden we would move because they didn't want to take basketball away from me. They knew that I would still want to keep playing because I was getting pretty serious with it at that time. I was already playing for the national team in Croatia. It was a shock at first. Everything is different, you know, even though it's Europe and it's still, you know, kids there are still kids, just how my friends were at the time. But you are now a person who came from somewhere else. So you're new to them and they're all new to you. Uh, luckily, I was speaking English. Um, I started learning English when I was six. So that wasn't a problem as much. But then through English, I had to learn Swedish. And that took a little bit of time and it was a lot of ups and downs in your confidence, of course, because should I be doing this? Am I good at this? Am I ever going to pick up on this language? But I was lucky to have a whole lot of great teachers. Most of them I still keep in contact with and they follow my basketball journey. Initially, when I first moved to Sweden, I kind of paused my education in order to learn Swedish. So I was still going to school every day, but it was mostly centered on language. And so then after, those, after two years of that, I kind of picked up where I left off at home with high school. And yeah, over the three years of going to high school in Sweden, I was finally valedictorian my senior year. And I mean, it was huge for me. It was huge for my family. They were all very, very proud of me. I kind of knew it was coming <laughs> because obviously you know that you're doing good, but you never quite know that you're leaving such an impact on other classmates and even professors at the school. It's like she knew from day one what she wanted and she has gone after it each and every day academically. And then I just think personally her growth with just her teammates, getting to know them, spending more time with them, realizing how much it means to them that they have her around a little bit more.